Hey everyone, this is Nick and it's Distro Week again, apparently. Because we have the release of Ubuntu 23.04 and all its official variants. We have the release of Fedora 38, which I promptly upgraded to on my laptop. And we also have a bold plan to revive Solus, which apparently isn't dead at all. And we also have some big, big updates to KDE Gear, the compilation of KDE apps, including a lot of new ones and nice updates to the existing ones. And we also have this update from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, a fantastic tool to stream operating systems, desktops and apps straight to your browser. They just released version 1.13, which adds a workspace registry for installing and sharing open source container-based images, including the linuxserver.io collection of web desktops that are now streamed using Chasm VNC. Additional updates include enhanced mobile support with progressive web apps, and you can now stop or pause workspaces to restore them later. The Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, but they also have a cloud service if you prefer. So to learn more about Chasm Workspaces, click the link in the description. Now, both Ubuntu 23.04 and Fedora 38 were released this week, both bringing GNOME 44 and its various legibility improvements to the quick settings, the ability to quickly connect to previously paired Bluetooth devices, thumbnails in the file picker, a real tree view in the file manager, the ability to disable mouse acceleration and overlay scroll bars, better mouse and touchpad settings, revamped accessibility preference panels, support for WireGuard VPNs, a slightly redesigned lock screen, and more. Fedora keeps GNOME as vanilla as possible, and Ubuntu added their own brand new installer, which looks better and is faster, but removes ZFS support. They also added badges on dock icons when an open app has an open notification. All official Ubuntu flavors have also been updated, with the biggest changes lying in Kubuntu, which jumps two full KDE versions, from 5.25 to 5.27. Xubuntu is getting the latest version of XFCE, and Ubuntu Budgie is moving up to Budgie 10.7. Ubuntu Cinnamon and Unity are now also official flavors, and they have their 23.04 version as well. I have a dedicated video on Ubuntu 23.04. I left a link to it in the description and in the card up top. I personally made the update to Fedora 38 on my laptop. I had two issues, two extensions not working well, but apparently you can just modify the version in their manifest so they run, and DaVinci Resolve not working, which I solved by removing the old libraries it tries to use, which don't match with the system's versions. Now it looks like Solus might have some life left in it after all. The day before I posted the previous news video, they posted a quick recap on Reddit, which I unfortunately missed. And Joshua Strobel, who had previously left Solus, now has posted a full-on blog post on the official Solus blog. The gist of it is that they now moved the infrastructure they couldn't access anymore to the one used by Serpent OS, the distro built by the initial creator of Solus, Ike Doherty. So things are now back online as much as they can be, and operations will be able to resume. On top of that, they announced plans to reorganize how the distro is run and communicates, and how they will update the distro. Solus 4 will still see updates, notably a new OS installer, a better software center, integration with Steam, and more. And to start moving forwards again, they work on Solus 5 as well. This version will be rebased on Serpent OS, another from scratch distro, which is currently in development and has no stable release. The goal is to have a high performance base and to avoid duplicating efforts. So EOPKG, the package manager of Solus, will be replaced by Moss, which is the package manager for Serpent OS. Just like the build system, the development hub, and the binary package manager will use Serpent OS's alternatives. This should leave more time to focus on package updates, testing, stability, and Serpent OS, on the other hand, gets a more large-scale base to test their tools. It also means that Solus will be an atomic and immutable operating system, and will have the ability to have a Solus user repository, much like what the AUR is. This is all pretty exciting, and I hope it can generate more excitement for Solus as a distro, but these changes for Solus 5 
are huge and I'm not sure the whole Solus community will agree with them or will follow the distro through this plan. Still, for now, it's just a plan, so we'll have to see how well it pans out in the future. Now, KDE Gear just got its 23.04 update, and the collection is now joined by a bunch of new apps that matured over the course of the past few years or months. There's Tokodon, the Mastodon client, which now lets you view previous messages when you're applying to them, and has a dedicated search page to let you find specific posts. It also lets you configure a proxy before logging into your Mastodon account, and it lets you access follow requests. They also added Audio Tube, which is a YouTube music client that lets you search, create playlists, share links to songs, and also looks pretty damn good while doing all of that. NeoChat is a matrix client that has a compact layout, video playback controls, the ability to edit messages inline, and good keyboard navigation. And all three apps are adaptive, which means they work well on desktops and mobile devices as well. And of course, there are also updates to apps that were already part of the compilation. Spectacle, the screenshot tool, now has a nice redesign with different tabs for screenshots or screen recordings. And these now work on Wayland as well. It also has some very nice annotation tools that now work on the rectangle selection mode as well. Dolphin, the file manager, now lets you configure how permissions are shown in the details view, numerically like 755, or with text like RWX, or with both systems. It will also let you browse Apple devices you plug into your computer, and they've improved performance when calculating directory sizes. Gwenview, the image viewer, will now let you use touchpad gestures to zoom in and out on Wayland, and it can prevent sleep and screen lock when playing a slideshow in the foreground. Elisa, the music player, now lets you collapse its giant header and it supports creating and opening .pls playlist files. Ocular, the PDF viewer, has a tweaked toolbar layout and now separates the view modes on the left and the tools on the right. And you can also move that toolbar around or in a dock if you want. Kdon Live also got an update with support for nested timelines that make it way easier to work on big projects and Calendar has a much improved address book to complete its stellar calendar and task management. PlasmaTube, the YouTube player, now accesses videos from Nvidia's, so ads and trackers are blocked by default. Casts, the podcast client, can be minimized to the system tray and lets you change playback speed for each show, and you can search through your list of podcasts. Which, hopefully, includes the Linux and open source news podcast I create each week, which complements nicely this video with more topics and more in-depth coverage of each topic. The link is in the description. So, very good updates to the KDE Gear compilation. You'll get that automatically depending on how your distro releases feature updates to the various applications you use. Now, as per GNOME, it looks like their new image viewer, Loop, is now complete enough to become the core GNOME image viewer, at least in terms of features. Their next step is to polish it, tackling bugs and the like. Loop is a pretty great app with support for touchpad gestures to navigate and zoom, printing images, ICC color profiles, and is capable of rendering a lot of different image formats, including SVG, plus the ability to view multiple images and drag and drop support. Now on top of that, Authenticator now supports backing up your authentication data in the free OTP Plus format, and it lets you import an image containing a QR code to add a new account. Developers also worked on adding Chromecast support for the GNOME Network Displays feature, this will land in GNOME 45, and you'll then be able to cast your PC to any Chromecast device. There's also a new app called Dino, which is a chat and video call app, now available on FlatHub. Tube Converter now lets you set download speed limits, or lets you use ARIA 2 as the downloading backend. Denaro, the personal finance manager, now has a notes field to add information to transactions, and you can choose to only export filtered transactions. Fosh, the mobile shell, can now handle emergency calls, either from a contacts list or using a numpad. And Graphs got a huge update with a complete UI overhaul, a plot editor that can save various styles to reuse them later, the ability to save projects in a single file, better clipboard integration, and plenty of bug fixes. So yet another week where the GNOME app ecosystem continues to impress. Now seriously, how good do we have it with the KDE and the GNOME apps we have today? They're insane. Reddit is a very popular platform, or popular enough at least, that has been used to train a lot of AI tools. 
which probably have learned from it to be sassy and to harass people for no reason. Still, this use seems to have been the catalyst for a change in Reddit's API that will now be behind a paywall, at least for actors that need higher usage limits and more rights to the content posted there. The API will apparently stay open for what they call reasonable and appropriate use cases, which is very vague but probably includes third-party Reddit clients and apps. The API has been free since 2008 and the changes will take effect in two months. Reddit states it won't impact moderation bots or extensions and that they're building more moderation tools to help the community manage itself. This obviously reminds me of the recent similar move Twitter made, except Reddit will keep its access free of charge for some use cases, that they warned people in advance, and that they didn't shut down their API all of a sudden. Now, of course, unauthorized use of Reddit's content might not have been the sole factor, as Reddit is preparing to go public and additional revenue sources might boost the valuation as well. And of course, the fact that user-contributed content is the property of the company that hosts it has always been a very weird thing to me, but I guess that's how it is. And they will definitely have to precise what are the reasonable use cases that they will allow. But still, I think they executed the move as well as could be done. System76 went into a product announcement frenzy this week with three new laptops, the Serval WS, Adder WS and Bonobo WS. WS standing for workstation, I presume. The Adder is a portable workstation coming with either a 15 or 17 inch 1080p display running at 144 Hertz. It has a 24 core Intel i9 CPU, the latest Nvidia 40 series GPUs up to a 4070, and up to eight terabytes of storage and 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM. It's a desktop replacement in short. The Serval seems to use the same general specs as the Adder, but can be specced up to a 4K display and has faster connectivity with 2.5 gig Ethernet and Thunderbolt 4. And the Bonobo is their most powerful laptop, being able to fit an RTX 4080 or 4090 and coming with a 17 inch 4K display running at 144 Hz, plus up to 12 terabytes of storage. It's not available just yet, and it seems to use the same chassis as the Serval. The Adder starts at $1,600 US dollars, the Serval at $1,800 US dollars, and the Bonobo's price hasn't been revealed yet, but I would estimate around $2,000. Very interesting devices, although as desktop replacements, they are not cheap. But if you're looking for that kind of product and you live in Northern America, System76 is probably your best bet because every other Linux manufacturer will have big shipping fees. And let's finish this with the gaming news. Valve just released Proton 8, obviously based on Wine 8. New officially supported titles include the Dead Space remake, Nioh 2, Forspoken, Warriors Orochi 3, and a lot more. They also fixed tons of issues with various launchers and a bunch of games like Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, The Witcher 3, Life is Strange Remastered, or Immortals Phoenix Rising. And they also improved multi-touch support and updated all the underlying libraries to the latest version, so DXVK, VKD3D, and the like. It immediately received a minor update and a hotfix as well to fix a few compatibility problems and enable support for Minecraft Legends on the Steam Deck. You will automatically get it through Steam or through your Steam Deck, and you can set it as the default in the game's properties window. And Lutris has a new beta out to help you manage all your games in one place. And it's a nice update with added support for using Proton instead of being limited to Wine and various modified versions of it. This should improve game compatibility and the general experience quite a bit. There's also a new integration for itch.io, performance improvements, and the ability to use a specific preset when installing a setup.exe file, like choosing Windows 98 or simulating a 3DFX card, for example. There are also plenty of smaller UI and UX improvements all over the app, and Lutris can now install and run other Flatpak applications, which should make the experience on devices like the Steam Deck a lot smoother. The beta is available as a Debian package for now or a bin file if you want to test things out and you're feeling adventurous. 
And I think it's finally time that I gave Dead Space Remake a shot on the Steam Deck. Maybe I'll be able to finish the game this time and not stop at the first encounter with the Regenerator. Okay, you can laugh at me if you want, but you can't laugh at this segue to today's sponsor. If you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it, and you don't want the hassle of trying to figure out how to make things work or not even take the risk of having something not work out of the box, click the link in the description below and get yourself a device from Tuxedo. They make laptops and desktops for all price points and all needs. They are all very customizable, whether you need a super affordable laptop or a very powerful desktop tower, something for gaming, they have it all. And they're all configurable, customizable, all the laptops are openable, repairable, upgradable. You can replace the battery, the SSD, the RAM, and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux, and you don't want to figure out how to make things work, buy something that was designed to run your preferred operating system. Click the link in the description below. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why I suck down there. No, wait, that didn't sound right. Oh, well, and if you really enjoyed the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description of the video as well for LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, whatever you can think of. You know how to do this. So thank you all for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.